I was about to do a live stream in a different location. I have a crappy microphone, guys. This is the old one that I used to use. Forgive me if the audio doesn't sound that good, but Dana White just announced some big fights for UFC 300. That's right, UFC 300 being announced on a random Thursday night. I hope that these are just some of the smaller ones, but I'm a little worried, and I'll let you know why. Aljamain Sterling is coming back to fight Calvin Cater. It's going to be at featherweight. Yuri Prohaska is coming back to fight Alexander Rakic on UFC 300 as well. Robert Whitaker and Paulo Costa is being added to UFC 298. And the first thing I want to say is all of the pay-per-views in 2024 are unbelievably stacked. And I think UFC 300 is going to be stacked as well. But I am a little bit worried that Dana White is going to put Aljamain Sterling and Calvin Cater on the main card and Yuri Prohaska and Alexander Rakic on the main card. Because let me just say this, I don't think that these are main card worthy fights for UFC 300. And I know some of you guys are going to be saying, what are you, a casual? Yuri Prohaska, the fact that he wouldn't even be on the main card? Are you out of your mind? This is a former champion. I get it. Yuri Prohaska is the most entertaining fighter in the game. He's one of my favorite fighters. But Alexander Rakic is the most boring fighter in the UFC, arguably. Okay? Alexander Rakic is the worst light heavyweight when it comes to entertainment. And this is just a horrible stylistic matchup to put together for UFC 300. I'd rather see five other Yuri fights. I'd rather see five other Rakic fights because I don't want Rakic to go out there and wet blanket Yuri Prohaska. And I know people are going to talk about Alexander Rakic being this dangerous striker. Look at what he did to Jimmy Manawa. Man, that's not the norm. Rakic goes out there. He doesn't engage in the pocket. He doesn't engage in striking exchanges. He bides his time. He stinks it up. And if he takes someone to the ground, he usually doesn't do shit with it. And I think he might just go out there and wet blanket Yuri Prohaska. And I don't want to see a wet blanket Alexander Rakic stink session on UFC 300's main card. I'm not interested in seeing that. Okay? If it was Yuri Prohaska versus Jan Blahovich, fuck yeah, man. Throw that on the main card. 100%. Two former champions. Striking battle. 100% I'm down. I have the same issue with Aljamain Sterling and Calvin Cater. Why didn't they just do Aljo versus Brian Ortega and Calvin Cater versus Yair Rodriguez, both on UFC 300, right? Now, I understand Yair Rodriguez and Ortega is going to be on UFC Mexico. That's going to be on the fight night. It's going to be five rounds. That's great. That's exciting. But it's a rematch that no one was really asking for. And wouldn't it be more interesting to see the grappling exchanges between Aljo and Ortega? And wouldn't it be more interesting to see a striking battle between Yair and Calvin Cater? I don't want to complain about these matchups, but I'm just saying, you know, you would think a billion dollar company would put together some better fights that would make more sense for a card that's supposed to be a once in a decade card where every single fight should not only be between two big names, unlike Bo Nickel and Cody Brundage, for Christ's sakes. The fact that Cody Brundage has fluked his way to UFC 300 is an abomination in and of itself. But you would think that a billion dollar company would be able to figure out a way to put together some matchups that are also going to be like guaranteed bangers. As I just said, Yair and Cater is a better matchup. And Aljo versus Ortega is an amazing matchup. It's one of the best matchups you could possibly make between two high-level grapplers that the fans would love to see, all right? These are just easy things that they could fucking figure out. <laughs> you know what I mean? But listen, I, I don't want to be the guy that's always complaining. I'm just saying, man, you have the most entertaining fighter the world has ever seen in Yuri Prohaska. You could put him up against a guy that's going to strike with him for UFC 300. I get it. You can't always have the, the stylistic matchup be perfect for entertainment purposes only. But for this card, that's what it should be. Okay? This is not a normal card. All right? And, and it's the same reason why I don't love the fact that these might be on the main card. All right? And I already complained about the Brundage fight. I wouldn't mind seeing Bo Nickel on UFC 300 if he's the first fight on the early prelims and he's at least fighting someone that's a step up in competition 
from Jamie Pickett and Val Woodburn, all right? Cody Brundage is one of the worst fighters in the UFC, period, right? I mean, if you're going to have a Bo Nickel fight where you at least want him to win, I understand that they want to get a highlight out of it. They want to build his name. You could still get a guy that's more known, like a, a Gerald Mearshart, for example, or just someone that's going to be a tougher test that's going to make the fans actually think a little bit about the matchup and maybe think to themselves, you know what, maybe Bo gets fraud checked here. This this could be dangerous. That's not going to go through anyone's mind. And because that's not going to cross anyone's mind, it's not an interesting fight at all. Again, like I don't want to be the guy that's complaining, but I just can see that there are some changes that can easily be made. You just have to have some hardcore fans that are running the show when it comes to being a matchmaker, man. Like, I could just picture a bunch of out-of-touch old heads that have been living under a rock that just see, oh, yeah, two guys near each other in the rankings. Yeah, put them up together. Yeah, take your shit this one out. You know what I mean? And also, let me break down Robert Whitaker and Paulo Costa, okay? I'm confident Robert Whitaker is going to go out there and school Paulo Costa. I know his chin is iffy. That's his Achilles heel. But Paulo Costa has overrated power. And if you think about it, man, this guy's pound for pound power may not even be as good as Max Holloway's. And Max Holloway's not known as a, a big power puncher. At least he has 10 plus KOs in his UFC career. Paulo Costa, this guy couldn't even finish Luke Rockhold. This guy got outstruck by Marvin Vittori. If that's not indicative of him not being a great fighter, I don't know what is, okay? Especially when you're supposed to go out there and knock Rockhold out. Or at least, I don't know, Big Paulo Costa, the better striker in that division. You can't get the better of mediocre Marvin. And this is not like the Duplessis matchup where Duplessis had knocked people out with one shot in his UFC debut, right? He also knocked out Trevin Giles with like a, a Superman style of punch off the cage. He knocked out Derek Brunson. Like this is a guy that had wicked KO power going into the Whitaker fight. Paulo Costa is not proven to have one shot power at all. He's finished an old man, Johnny Hendricks, testosterone had crashed and he was old, as I just said. Uriah Hall, known for wilting. It took like 20 unanswered shots up against the cage to put him down. And it was more of like a, you know, he was, he was weathering up against the fence more than just getting dropped by a big shot. Paulo Costa, I don't think you have to be worried that much about his one-shot KO ability, his skill. It's not up there. His career, it's not being taken seriously. Again, he is pulled out of his last three fights looking for free vacations, basically. And I know Big Paulo Costa might want himself a free vacation, but I don't think he's going to get that this time. Like, it's now or never. If he doesn't show up for this one, he's probably going to get cut. And I really do think that ever since he's lost to Adesanya, I think his goals have changed. And I think it's went from him wanting to become a champion to just wanting to show up for a paycheck and every now and then finesse the UFC into giving you a free vacation by pulling out the week of a fight and getting to stay there for the next month because they're going to cover your hotel expenses. So, listen, I think Whitaker's going to style on him. I don't think Paulo Costa's going to be good enough to get Whitaker up against the fence, and it's like, listen, if Luke Rockhold could eat a punch from Paulo Costa, I think that Robert Whitaker will be able to eat a couple of shots. And again, you know, we think about other matchups where I've picked the guy that just got knocked out and it didn't turn out so well. For example, Benil Dariush, I did pick him to beat Armand Saryukian after he got knocked out against Charles. But the difference between Armand Saryukian and Paulo Costa in this matchup is that Armand Saryukian is absolutely elite. And Paulo Costa, he's not. He's not elite, okay? So I don't think he's going to be able to beat Whitaker. Again, Drickus Duplessis, you guys might be bringing him up. Well, no one was able to fraud check Drickus Duplessis before Robert Whitaker. Like, no one was beating him in the UFC, at least, right? He had gotten knocked out before the UFC against Soldich. He also knocked Soldich out. But in Costa's situation, he's already been fraud checked. He's already gotten exposed by Vittori on the feet, which is just pathetic if you think about it and so i don't worry as much for robert whitaker's chin we know that's one of his achilles heels or should i say his only achilles heel i don't see whitaker knocking out costa whitaker is a guy that needs to be perfect for 15 minutes so it's always gonna be a little worrisome to see him in there with anyone because of his chin but at the same time i don't think costa is going to be skilled enough 
to get Whitaker in a place to where he can tee off on him with long form combinations. And because of that, I'll probably go with Robert Whitaker to win a decision. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, Yuri Prohaska and Alexander Rakic, I don't have a prediction for that yet. I don't think Rakic is going to have a lot of success on the feet, but I will say this. Yuri Prohaska isn't really good at checking low kicks, and Rakic may not have the same ability to throw a perfect kick without telegraphing it like Pereira. Pereira's really the only guy that has that ability to not only kick really hard, but to not telegraph and not turn over the hips. Rakic definitely telegraphs his kicks, but they may be the hardest kicks in MMA, okay? Maybe not the most effective because he's not able to sneak them in as effectively, but they may be the hardest. And we just saw Pereira take away Yuri's movement. So that could be effective for Alexander Rakic in this fight to kick the legs of Yuri. But I do see him mixing in the takedowns. And uh, even though Glover Teixeira is a little bit more skilled when it comes to submissions and finishing people, Rakic is twice the size of Glover Teixeira. He's one of the biggest light heavyweights that there's ever been in the entire sport. So he could just go out there and uh, put on a little bit of a wet blanket fest, which is unfortunate. I would hate to see it. I want Yuri to win, but I might even pick Rakic to just stink it up because he's coming off of an injury. He doesn't want to take any risks. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Until next time.